Hello, everyone. Welcome to our weekly Bible study here on our YouTube channel for the Needville Global Methodist Church. Hope you're having a wonderful week. And before we dive into our catechism uh, questions for today, I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button down below the video and also hit the like button on the video. Helps to uh, get this video out there to as many people as possible. And of course, use the comment section down below. Talk with me what you like, what you didn't like, any questions you have about what we talk about. It's a great way for us to interact with each other. Let's dive into our questions for today. Today, we're going to look be looking at five questions. I know some weeks we've gone one question, some like last week, some weeks we've gone two or three questions. This week, we're going to go with five. And the reason is because all five of these questions deal with basically the same idea. So we're going to talk about a general concept and answer these questions. So I'm going to fi spit fire off uh, the questions real quick so that we know what we're dealing with. Um, as always, down in the description of this video is the list of all of the scripture references that answer all of these questions in the scripture. So I encourage you to go and look at that rather long laundry list um, of all the different scripture references for today's video. But the first question we're going to answer and look at is, is the Son God, all right, Son, of course, is capitalized S, right? We're talking about is the, is Jesus is the son of the Trinity really God, or is he something different? What is the son's role in creation? Why did the son of God become human? How did the son of God become human? And then finally, the question, the ultimate question of who is Jesus Christ? All right. So we're going to kind of go through each of these individually, but it all culminates with that last question, who is Jesus Christ? Because, of course, the answer is Jesus Christ is all of these an answers combined into one being, right? So first and foremost, we want to answer the question, is the Son God? Now, we're talking about the triune God. All right. Now, the triune God, we talk about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? All of them are the same entity yet they are also all different. Um, <clears throat> it's hard for us as human beings to quite wrap our heads around this. Uh, C.S. Lewis, one of the great theologians of our day, equated it to being trying for a 2D creation to understand a 3D creation. Um, we are a 3D creation that are trying that is trying to understand a 4D creation. It's something that goes beyond even our conceptions. We can't even fathom how it works. So when we talk about the fact that all three are the same and yet they are separate, um, it's it's a hard concept. I'm going to try and work as best we can. But the answer that we get from the catechism says, yes, the son is eternally begotten of the father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the father. Now, the word begotten means that it came forth from. Right, it it wasn't created by; it was part of them. Think of it as the difference between an artist making a sculpture and a mother or father begetting a child. While the sculptor certainly put a lot of himself into his sculpture or her sculpture, and therefore you can, after especially after viewing their entire work, you can see their, you know their nuance, their fingerprint, as it were, on their piece of art so that you could look upon numerous pieces of art and handpick which ones were theirs. They aren't really connected to them, are they? Not biologically speaking. Whereas the child is not necessarily something that they made as far as with their hands or 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 you know put it all together or anything like that yet it was begotten uh, again lewis said, tells us that something that is begotten is something that is like what 
the original create what the original is whereas the something that is created is something that is different when a when an artist creates a sculpture that sculpture is not a man no matter how talented he or she may be the sculpture of a human is not a human it's still wood or marble or whatever substance they used to make the sculpture but when two humans come together they make another human begotten so when it says that god begot the son the son is something that is equal to god not something that is less than or different from god makes sense i know it's difficult it's a difficult concept but basically what we're trying to get at is the fact that when we talk about the son when we talk about the father and when we talk about the holy spirit while we're talking about three separate entities we're also talking about the same entity as i used to tell people all the time one plus one plus one equals three is math one plus one plus one equals one is faith that's what it means to believe in the triune God. And the Son is one of the three pieces of that God, triune God. Now, let's get to the question of what is the Son's role in creation. Here we go to the Gospel of John, when John tells us that Jesus has been there since the very, very, very beginning and even beforehand. In the creation story of the cosmos, God created all things. We believe and we proclaim that Jesus was there from the very beginning. He was begotten from the Father at the very, very beginning, before anything else, before light and darkness, before God swept over the waters of chaos. God and Christ were always there. That is his, that is the role of the creation. Now, the second answer to this is, is the answer we get from the catechism for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy spirit, and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. So we also find this point piece of, we have this triune God, God begot the son. The son is in essence, the exact same thing as the father, just like a human child is the exact same thing as their parents, Right. Yet this be this part of God, this part of the triune God also became human. He didn't just fall down to earth, retain his divinity, and walk amongst people. He really and truly became human. In Jesus Christ was the amalgamation of divine and human perfectly mixed together so that they couldn't they you could not split them apart you couldn't take a sword down the middle of them and say okay his right hand side was divine his left hand side was human that's not how it worked he was fully human and fully divine fully man and fully god that is what we believe in jesus why did the son of man become human well the simple answer is he did it for us and for salvation. All right. That's the simple answer. Now I have another Bible study on here where I go through um, the book, mere Christianity from CS Lewis. He has an excellent, excellent understanding and grasp of why Jesus had to become human. In order to go through that, I, this lesson would be about 30 to 45 minutes longer. So I'm not going to go into all that. If you'd like to go into the uh, channel, you can find that video and listen to it. Or you can go read the, mere, the book Mere Christianity and understand it that way. But at the end of the day, the reason is because the only way for God to help us down the path that we needed help with was going down a path that he in his infinite characteristic could not travel. He needed to teach, he needed to help us on how to submit because we have to submit to his will. But God cannot submit to anything because there's nothing for him to submit to. So he had to become human. So that then through the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus, could God then come to us? Now, I believe there's a second reason. 
And that second reason is that of all the pantheon of gods throughout all of his, human history, there has never been another god that has known exactly what it means to be human except for our God, because through Christ, he experienced every emotion and everything that a human would experience, hunger, thirst, love, pain, tragedy, everything was experienced in Jesus's life. And so when God says, I understand you, it's not just because he created you. It's because he's lived where you have lived. He's walked where you have walked and he has triumphed over all of it. Now, second to last question is how did the son of God become human? Again, there is a simple explanatory answer to this. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. We get the whole story from, from Advent, right? From Christmas, how Jesus was conceived. At the end of the day, that is exactly all we get. All we get. We know that the Son of God became human, truly human. The how, as much as it pains a lot of us to say it really doesn't matter. With God, all things are possible, which means that if it was meant to be and it was part of his plan for the salvation of the human race, then guess what? It was going to happen. Jesus, the, the, the son of God became human because he had to, because he needed to, because God willed it to be. That is how the Son of God became human. And then our final question, the ultimate question, the best question, who is Jesus Christ? Well, the answer is he is the Son of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ and our Lord Jesus Christ are one person in whom the divine and the human natures are perfectly and inseparably united. He is the bridge that bridges the fallen mess of humanity and creation to the perfect divine nature of God, our creator. Before Christ, the two were at odds with each other, but through Christ, we now are connected. And it is the Holy Spirit that we'll get to in a little bit in a couple of weeks that helps that connection stay strong. That is who Jesus Christ is. He is the epitome of humankind. He is the perfect human. He lived the law perfectly. And through his sacrifice, he connects us to God. But at the end of the day, he would not have been able to be a perfect human without his divinity. No human could be perfect because we are flawed, because we sin, because we make the wrong mistake. But Jesus never made a mistake. Jesus never went the wrong way. He never made a bad choice. He never went beyond where he was supposed to go. He never took a step off the right path. And he did so because he was God. Therefore, we have to believe that Jesus was both at the same exact time, so that we, through him, can get to the Father.